Joystick Justice League to episode four of Breaking News. I'm Mike Fursios. I'm Jim Moore. And we're here to bring you a whole bevy of good indie goodness coming up, especially some AAA gems up in the next year or so. Part one of Breaking News today, Joe, is going to be dedicated to pretty much like platforming and the hardcore 2D side-scrolling games. So let's start off with Shovel Knight. So this is a new one coming out for the PC, uh, also the Nintendo Wii U and the 3DS, as well as the Mac and Linux platform. So what did you see from this trailer, Joe? What can you tell us about Shovel Knight? Well, this looks like a, a good old fashioned side scrolling, you know, 2D action game with, uh, with some interesting gameplay elements. I mean, uh, you're not, uh, your, your weapon is a shovel. Yes. So, so not only is it an offensive weapon, but it's a defensive weapon, but you can also use it there's also some other elements of uh, you know making your way through the environment, creating some new paths, uh, some mean kind of attacks like a pull and kind of shovel attack to only attack enemies to to work your way down through the environment and whatnot. So. Yeah, that that pull attack, you're mm -hmm. seeing that come back into the mainstream again. Like this, this immediately makes me think of Ducktales remastered and the original Ducktales. Pretty much any of those Capcom plot performers from back in the day. This really is a love letter to like the 8-bit. Capcom-esque platformer. So, you know, elements of Castlevania, you got elements of Mega Man here, but especially that pogo attack which you saw come back in Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, DuckTales, coming back into here, really showing you how how intricate the level design is here. I think that's really the highlight of this, like kind of like games like Rayman Legends, where it's really about, you know, enemies being in the right place. Yeah, it's and some really cool bosses. And it's just it's 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 very uh, like you said, it's very much an, an homage to, to that, that that style of game. Yeah, definitely something that both hardcore and casual platform fans Absolutely. can get into. Um, beautiful retro art, like again, like those those yeah. those bosses are straight out of those old Capcom NES games, where it's just like big bright colors. Um, you know, so a lot lots of fun. It's like if you're into that, like again, those like those hardcore well-tuned, well-structured platformers. I don't think you can go wrong uh, here. That one is coming from Yacht Club Games. So this is uh, their first game. Again, coming to all PC platforms, including Mac Linux, Wii U and 3DS, but not Xbox or PlayStation. So, yeah, interesting it's, one, it's, yeah. It's a, 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 another uh, good game I, I like to see uh, coming out on, on uh, the Wii U and the 3DS. Yeah, you know, so this is, uh, this is one of those things that the Wii U really needs. I think this is gonna be a very strong indie game, and the fact that it's not going to competing platforms could make this like a really cool console exclusive. Yeah, and really cool move with uh, Nintendo starting to, to have a few of these indies, and uh, I'm hoping to see more of that. You really need that. I mean, there was the reveal recently that the Wii U is getting a lot more indie stuff. Um, it was troubling to see that there wasn't a lot of attention being paid to Nintendo's platforms by the indies, but slowly we're still seeing cool stuff like this. In addition to, you know, Treasure Knots mm -hmm. and Scram Kitty, you know, it, the Wii U is gonna have its own little ecosystem as well, so I'm really excited about that. The next game we're gonna talk about is kind of like this, but taken to an even more hardcore level. This one is called Rogue Legacy. So a lot of chatter about this one. It's coming to the PC, but also it's already out for PC. It's made a bit of way. It's made some waves, but now it's come to the PS4 and Vita. So, um, how's this like Shovel Knight? Shovel Knight, how's it different, Joe? Uh, it, it's similar in, in kind of the looking gameplay wise, but but taken to that much more of a hardcore core kind of level. Like it really does feel like a like a 2D Dark Souls kind of game. Big time with skill trees and and character development and, and leveling up and whatnot. It's it's definitely like Shovel Knight, but it, taken. Up few more notches. I'd say it's less about the platforming but and this time more about your skill in battle. That that twitchy kind of ghosts and goblins that's like really ghosts and goblins brought to like the the, the, the new generation. Um, definitely I'd say like like Shovel Knight in some respects but this is gonna go much more hardcore territory. The boss fights gonna be more badass. There's skill trees so there's a lot uh, of moves you're gonna have to learn, techniques. Uh, there's a there's a, and it's procedurally generated so it's all random. Like it's Metroidvania style. Yeah. But it's it's always a new way of playing. And also, classes. and also a cool thing, uh, sort of in the in the, the vein of uh, uh, Infinity Blade, that even mm -hmm. when you die, that's not the end. You're it's almost like a like a kind of sort of like a blow line, like your a genealogy, your, yeah. Your, your descendant kind of carries over the skills and, and uh, abilities that you've already developed and then continues on. Right, but in a sense that you're you're also going to pass along random genetic traits to your offspring. So maybe your next playthrough you'll be colorblind. You'll play it in black and white, or you'll have gigantism where you'll be like this huge character. Uh, there's so many. Or even irritable bowel syndrome. Yes, so you're gonna be a flatulent hero. That's in there as well. Yeah, so the game that doesn't always take itself too seriously, but I think for again like for fans of like Dark Souls 
Ghosts and Goblins, those hardcore roguelikes are really going to sink their teeth into this. Like, so again, this one's coming from Cellar Door Games. Again, it's already out on PC via Steam as of June 27th, but it is coming to the PS4 and Vita consoles, so you can sink your teeth in this one very soon. Uh, coming up next, a game that you recently bought mm -hmm. called Foul Play from publisher Devolver Digital, developer Mediatonic Games. This one, um, tell us about this, Joe. You've actually had some hands-on experience with this. I've had You've already played the PC you know, version. Once again, Devolver Digital. Yes. You've become a major player in the indie game industry, almost kind of creeping close to the, the AAA kind of stats. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I picked this up uh, on uh, Steam the other day and uh, started playing it. And, and this is uh, sort of in the line of like Puppeteer, you know, of, of where, you're, where it's, it's 2D, well, 3D kind of side scrolling, but uh, the cool thing about it is, is, that, uh, is that it's like you're performing sort of like a play in front of people. Exactly. And, and, and by, by doing combos and keeping things going, there's like a there's like a crowd comes like an applause meter kind of a thing going on to where the, that you have to keep going, otherwise the, the crowd will start to boo you. Sort of kind of like rock band guitar list kind of thing where you have to keep the performance up, otherwise game's over. That's right. I think this is something that the puppeteer from from Japan Studio for the PS3 it touched upon. Like it had the crowd reacting to whatever you did something, but it felt very scripted, very candid. It was more about just bringing to the atmosphere of you sitting along and watching this show with somebody else. Whereas foul play, like you're saying, it's more interactive. Like you have to put on a show, not like for for the people watching this, this virtual audience. And that's really interesting because it forces you to learn a whole bunch of techniques and brings it into games like Deem like like sorry like Devil May Cry or or Bayonetta where like you said like your your grade at the end of the level really is based on how well you put on a show not only for the virtual audience but maybe the audience who's watching you actually play this game on say Twitch TV or yeah. something so makes me think of Castle Crashers. Yes, it definitely it definitely has a it's it's. It, it, it's along that same kind of vein, same kind of a look, and, and it also it's not uh, you're, you're also uh, d developing new abilities. It's actually some pretty cool ones where you're, you parry in mid air and you take the guy and throw them into uh, maybe the boss you're fighting and there are other enemies. So, so you're, you're building yourself up as well. Yeah, and that's what I, I think a way of getting outside of the crypt the critique against you know these these side scrolling beat em ups is that is often the critique that they're repetitive and I think that this is anything but I think the fact that you, again you're leveling up you're getting new abilities you can chain them together into these insane combos really keeps it fresh and, and again this, the, the whole puppet show vibe is something new I, I like puppeteer I, I like where it was going but I think it could have done so much more and I think foul play is addressing where puppeteer could have gone like you said the big thing is with the audience interaction and really bringing you into this. This performance. So that's again coming from Mediatonic, Devolver Digital for the platforms of this one's coming to PC 360 and it, well, it's already up for PC 360 coming soon to the PS4 and Vita. So, uh, staying in the platforming uh, territory, this one is actually coming out for the 3DS and only for the 3DS. Mm -hmm. This one's known as Azure Striker Gunvolt. Okay, so this is coming from the, ma the makers of the Mega Man uh, Zero series and the upcoming Mighty Number no. 9, which has got the buzz of the internet, which is essentially a Mega Man, but not made by Capcom. So what, do you, what did you see from Azure uh, Striker Gunvolt? This is just a, a good Japanese anime style Side scrolling action game. Right? Yes. Right over the top, tons of action going on. Rock and roll ninja action. Absolutely. Yeah. Like pure Japanese style. Oh, absolutely. What yeah. games does this remind you of, Joe? Oh, it, it's it, it definitely has that that, uh, that that Mega Man vibe to it. But I mean, just uh, every kind of kick-ass kind of side scrolling kind of game is immediately. You immediately think of that when you see those games. Specifically, like the Treasure 16 bit and 32 bit era games like Gunstar Heroes, yeah. uh, Guardian Heroes, Astro Boy for the Game Boy Advance, like just like explosions everywhere, fantastic retro pixel art, a great sense of speed and, and coolness. Just like Foul Play, the fact that you've got all these different attacks that you can chain together to really put on a show for people, and like, we, like the Shovel Knight epic boss battles. Yes, absolutely. Which, which is really the heart of what makes any great speed-based action platformer. Yeah, tons of like lightning attacks and things just taking over the screen. I mean, it's just it's it, it's uh, kind of like similar to like Bayonetta. Yes. Like that, but uh, no, not a three D look to it. But I mean, just it does just tons of action kind of going so on. So much going on, yeah. twitchy. Just just so many ways to express yourself in battle. And, and I like the fact that this is coming out on three DS because that really does again push some more attention 
in, in Nintendo's favor. You know, you're not going to be able to cop out and get this on Steam or Mac. You you actually have to go out and buy a 3DS. And this again, this is coming from the Mega Man developers. You know, the people who are working on Mighty Number no. Nine, which is again another game that I'm really excited about. We we don't really have too much footage to show you yet, but I'm sure you've heard about this. It's on Kickstarter. It's going to like every platform knowing a man. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of cool stuff. And to kind of wrap up this part one of Joystick Justice League's breaking news episode four uh, platforming section. We're getting into a game called Aztez, mm -hmm. which is coming for PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, Xbox One, Wii U, and Vita. Okay, so Joe, what's what's Aztez? This is basically, it's another side-scrolling game, but some unique elements to it. First off, it's in black and white. Yes. With the exception of the blood being spilled. Yes, very cool. And also taking place in like the ancient Aztec civilization, which a unique element. You don't see that that period being addressed too often. And, you know, it's, it's going with our our, our, our roundtable podcast recently about stereotypes, talking about how games are always set in like fantasy, medieval realms, or sci-fi. I like the fact that they're trying to approach different areas of history. At first you might think, okay, this is like God of War side-scrolling, but it's not. It's not just a beat-em-up. What else is going on There's here, There's some strategy game elements too, where you yeah. can't conquer certain areas, which is... Uh, and with the Aztec Empire, which, you know, it actually does that justice, that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to take over that area. So it's not only, it's got some multiple elements going on here. Yeah, you know, there, there's a bit of Act Razor in here. There's a bit of God of War. Like you yeah, said, there's, a, there's, an, uh, there's an overarching RTS strategy. So, again, if you see the, the trailer for this online, you might think, okay, this is just a cool combo-based brawler with lots of blood and gore. But really, th there's a thinking element to this. And, and that's why I like this. It's, it's, it seems like a very ambitious indie game that's trying to be bigger that that it's 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 it, the sum of its parts. So um, I'm really looking forward to this one. Mm -hmm. This is coming out in quarter two of 2014 again for multi multiple platforms and uh, from Team Colorblind. So mm -hmm. that's the name of the developer for this one. Stay tuned for more breaking news uh, after the break. We're gonna come back with some uh, spacey kind of stuff and some simulations. So uh, lots of fun stuff. Mike Frusios, Joe Moore. Stay tuned to the Joystick Justice League. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of Breaking News, episode four. I'm Mike Frusios. Joe Moore. And we just discussed a whole bunch of cool, like, hardcore platformers, you know, accessible platformers. Now we're getting into some space games, some strategy. So let's start, and some survival horror. So let's start off with uh, a big triple A game on a lot of people's radar. And this has got some pressure on it, Joe, because of what came before. We're talking about Alien Isolation coming out from Creative Assembly and Sega. So, you know, if anybody's been sleeping under a rock for like the last couple of years, why is there so much pressure on this game to succeed, Joe? I think because uh, Colonial Marines, I mean, just was just not what from we were looking for. But, but, but this looks like it is finally gonna give this, uh, the you know, the, the alien uh, universe, it's finally gonna be a game that kind of you know, we're we're going to get our new fans, I think. It does some real justice. Yeah, so unlike Khalil Marines, which, is, which was kind of a spiritual successor to the second Aliens film by James Cameron, this one actually takes place 15 years after the first Alien film by Ridley Scott. Yeah. So you are actually playing, not as Ridley, but as her daughter, yeah. Amanda. Okay, so what's Amanda up to? It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's taking place uh, you know, after her disappearance and whatnot. Yep. But you know what's really cool is that it's done in the first person perspective. It's, it's very, it's not the uh, first person sure which they could have you know, copped out and done. This is really going for survival horror. So it puts it more in the league of like Amnesia, Dark Descent for PC, or even the recent Outlast, Outlast yeah. for PC, PS4. Um, it's first person, not a lot of stuff going on. It's more about sound, 
atmosphere, quiet versus noise, and, and, and just surviving with the very barest of elements, you know, whatever you have, whatever you can craft to, to kind of find out what happened to your mother and solve the mystery of, about what happened on this ship. And it's not like uh, like Blue and Marines where you're just attacking kind of waves of aliens. This is more of like a down and dirty, just one on one. But most of the time, you know, a lot of times, uh, what can be the scariest are things that you, you're, you can't see or you're just kind of hearing. This is really uh, going for that. I think this is going to be a game kind of like Outlast where it's going to genuinely creep and scare you out. Yeah, yeah, because that was the problem when I played Three Aliens Colonial Marines, and that's what a lot of people criticized the Colonial Marines game for, was the fact that all these Xenomorphs are just running everywhere and there's no real AI going on. They're just, they're all kind of pissed off. They're all jumping around yeah. and running at you. Whereas this, you see, you know, the, the Xenomorphs creeping around one by just maybe one solitary one, just kind of this foreboding presence and you don't have enough ammo or you don't have enough health to really take it on. You just want to run. And that's what really Aliens is about. Like it's not about full on hardcore action. It's about, again, just a, a very quiet, constrictive experience and that's what this game is I mean it's very dark very little light it's got that claustrophobic you know experience that the game the genre really needs it's it's finally the, the alien the aliens game that, that, that this really deserves <clears throat> we're, I think we're finally gonna get that with this game yeah absolutely so this is uh, it's supposed to be coming out this year uh, hoping probably towards maybe summer fall for like a holiday release so again if you if you if you've had it up to here well with all the aliens games I think this is finally where we're supposed to be going with this with some true attention being paid to what made the franchise great to begin with. And, and coming up for for most of the major platforms, PC, all the PlayStation platforms with the exception of the Vita and Xbox One 360. Yeah, so whatever you're playing on, you'll be able to get a taste of this. So that's Absolutely. Alien Isolation from Creative Assembly and Sega looking to redeem the Aliens franchise. Next up, wow, okay, this uh -huh. one, this 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 next news, I, I have a feeling about this, Joe, this is gonna be big. This is going to be possibly in the league of becoming like oh, the next World of Warcraft. Star Citizen from Chris Roberts, who we know is famous for making Wing Commander. Absolutely. So what? why is this going to be big, Joe? Well, first of all, I mean, Chris Roberts has, has an incredible amount of cash he from back in the day. I mean, this guy, the Wing Commander game, I mean, they were huge. They were extremely popular. Chris was very fond of them. I mean, this game is exciting because, it, you know, to, to be honest, this is probably the most ambitious game that like, I've ever seen. Period. Yes. I mean, like, let's look, talk over all of us. Like, look at the the, 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 the graphics, first of all, the yeah. detail in the ships. Like, we're talking about hundreds of moving parts that are based on real space technology. I mean, we're talking about some major players that Chris Roberts has aligned himself to, to, to get the authenticity of these ships. So we're talking about, like, we're talking about, like, aerospace companies like Anvil. Origin Jumpworks, Musashi Industrial, and Starflight Concern, Drake Interplanetary, and Aegis Dynamics. Chris Roberts is not fucking around here, and nope. he and he's being blatant that this is a PC gaming, which he, which the trailer is kind of like joking around. Oh, PC gaming disappeared. Well, it's back. When, when this does come out, I mean, you're gonna need, you're gonna need a top of the, uh, of the line break to run this. And uh, you know, this is being touted as sort of uh, from what early on what we saw when we watched some of the. Uh, uh, this developer diary that we watched, it was uh, originally kind of gonna. You know, uh, it was looking at uh, be mainly like a massively online multiplayer, but there's also a full-on single-player story-driven game in this as well. Yeah, let's break that down. So yeah, you have your, you basically you have your perpetual online, your persistent online experience where it plays on without you, so that you're part of this giant this giant universe, this you are a star citizen, literally, and, and you're basically trying to make your fame and fortune as a space pirate, aligning yourself with certain squadrons, fighting others in, in this massive play world. Now, if that seems too heavy for you and too time intensive, they're breaking this down in half. There is a single player component, like you mentioned, Joe, called Squadron 42. So, so tell us about why that's cool. Well, that's cool is that uh, it's also going to incorporate with the multiplayer a little bit too. It's, uh, you know, the, you know, I was a little, when we first started watching this, I was thinking that it was just going to be an online multiplayer game, but to, to have a full-on single player, I mean, that's what Wing Commander was always known for, was that it was that good. So it's, it's, it's nice that, they're, that there's going to be a nice mix of the two. This is basically their way to do the next-gen mission-based story-driven Wing Commander within a larger experience. Yeah, and, and I think that's a big reason why this is going to be strictly on PC, is that, that I think it's going to be just a little too much for the consoles. And like you say, he's, he's said, you know, this is... 
this it is going to be just a PC game, and it's evolving all the time, like Minecraft. Yes. You know, like it, it, it's gonna it's gonna be defined about by how how users basically experience this game and how they and the feedback that comes out of that. Um, but even like hardware aside, like having a beefed up PC, you need like a really strong online community and server base to support such an ambitious project. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of star systems and when you land there, we're talking about some detail in these cities. You get out of that ship and it becomes a first person exploration RPG game. I mean, Shades of Mass Effect here, Shades of Destiny. And we're not talking about like very simplistic worlds, we're talking about like like multiple sandboxes that yeah. you, you can play in. I, I don't think we're going to see this game in the next 12 months. No, it's gonna it's gonna take it. Uh, it's gonna take some time, and, and uh, that, that's not a bad thing. You know, I, I, th I think taking the time. I, I, th I think this has probably been uh, in development. I think longer than most people kind of realize, and really he's letting on. But uh, I'm gonna say, you know what? Take your time to make it, because I think I think it's gonna be something that's well worth the wait. It, it, if you're gonna be able to have a PC that's gonna be able to run. Yeah, exactly. But you know, just so many ways to define your experience within this and make it unique to yourself. But even again, like if you're not into that massive experience of playing with others, there's still something for, for the solitary gamer to sink their teeth in and, and enjoy. So I'm really looking forward to this. Right now, again, only PC, that could change depending on you know developments with cloud gaming on consoles, DirectX with Xbox, maybe near the end of this eighth generation, we could see something like this, but for now, PC only. And that is coming from Cloud Imperium, which is basically Chris Roberts' uh, new handle, and you can check out more online. He's got lots of videos up there. Staying in the realm of outer space, moving on to our next game. This one's looks looks pretty fun and arcadey, uh, with with some de direct influences and references to Velocity, a game we talked about last breaking news. This one's called the Next Penelope from Aurelian Regard. That's actually the name of the developer who used to be part of Arquito Studio, and they were famous for the Arquito series on PS3, uh, Jump Swap, and Pixel, which which were pretty simple minimalist games, very pretty looking. Uh, what did you see from this one, like, Joe? Next Penelope. That, that, that looks like a really really cool top-down racing game but with. Uh, some really cool elements like being able to teleport past certain things and just uh, you know it's a uh, you know, it's a very future futuristic twitchy I mean it, this looks like it's gonna be just a really cool futuristic racing game yeah you know like I said they, the, the developer admits they were they were actually inspired by Velocity Ultra also known as Velocity 2x coming to PS4 and Vita mm -hmm. so yeah you've got the teleporting the twitchy gameplay very high speed you can crash at any time, so it's got shades of Spy Hunter in that sense. Mm -hmm. But also, it, so it, it reminds me at first of Rock and Roll Racing. The fact mm -hmm. that not only can you warp, you can also shoot bombs and missiles. It's got that combat racing element. But then, t jumping off of that, you've got these mad, mad, badass boss battles. Yes. Yeah. So which it, is what makes it different from Velocity. Yeah. So and because and the, the, this is kind of serving this guy as a racing game, but but it's combined with uh, some of these little kind of you know top down that we've seen before, so it's really incorporating some really cool elements. Yeah, and just some fantastic use of color. It's, it's not mm -hmm. going for the typical blues, metallic grays, and everything of like a space game, but it's actually going for that more trippy kind of kind of kind of vibe to like a spacey space shooter. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, some really cool, like very indie. This one's only for PC at this PC. point, but uh, you know I, I can see with games like Velocity coming out that this this, this is going to catch fire. And again, it's just one of those really hardcore twitchy arcadey games that I think a lot of people can recognize and, and stick their teeth into. Um, again, staying in outer space here, uh, moving into another kind of arcadey genre. This one is is in the works. It's called Project Cypher, Cyber. Project Cyber from Spearhead Games, probably coming out sometime this year. Now, I don't even know if this name is going to stay the same. It seems like it's like a working title because this is a game in progress. So you, you, you struggled with this one at first, trying to figure out what this was about. You seem to get it now. Why? Why added this to the list? What? What is this game about? So this is basically taking place on a, on a moving. Uh, you're basically you're playing like a team-based foosball of, in the future kind of a game on top of a ship which is flying over through, through the city. Yes. So uh, immediately, I think it's going to be a very cool multiplayer kind of fast-paced sports game for people who I think. Don't you just like sports? Yeah, it, it, it reminds me, like the immediate thing I thought of when I first saw this was Speedball, that mm -hmm. old Midway classic yep. where it was it was kind of like a soccer slash football set in, in the future vibe. 
Um, but yeah, you've got this crazy multiplayer element, and, and like you said, this game was inspired by a game of foosball, so you, you can see that in the mechanics of, of, of how you pass and shoot the ball and move it around the field, there's almost kind of like a, 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 a kinetic pinball vibe to it. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and the, the, ship, the, the ship that you're, you're playing on is, is actually, and the gameplay is actually influenced by the way the ship is flying or like straight like, the, like with the, the wind kind of blowing through the sea so that also affects the gameplay very so, interesting so, point yeah so the, so there, there's some interesting uh st stuff going on here it's not just a straight up uh by looking at it it's, it's there's more going on i think than uh the one that, that you realize looking at it at, at first glance yeah it, it's it's going back to like how environmental factors can really change the nature of the game when like maybe the ship decides to do a quick left and goes through hyperspace yeah. all of a sudden you're kicking the ball and it's being thrown back in your face because the velocity is going west or whatever mm -hmm. so many things to, to, to take in here but I see this game getting big bigger because what they've stressed is that this is going to be a very community driven game like Minecraft like Star Citizen a game that builds over time it's never really finished it just keeps adding things based on player feedback so what I would really like to see Say like I'm gonna be tr we're gonna be probably trying the beta soon on Betamax because I have the beta for Project Cyber. What I really want to see is, is like customizable players, like with different shots, different defense abilities, maybe special moves, and I want to see more environmental effects. Like maybe the ship yes. that you're playing on crashes. What yeah. happens then? Or crashes, or maybe turns or a meteor hits the direction. field or something and changes the layout of the field or something. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of room for expansion, but even with what the game is now, mm -hmm. I think you can just have a fun time. Again, if you're not, if, if you're overburdened by how like how serious sports games have become, you you yearn for the days of the arcade games where you didn't have to worry about formations and plays and and all this kind of stuff. You just want to get in there and have a good competitive time, like old school era. I think this is going to be right up people's alley. Absolutely. So that is Project Cyber uh, from Spearhead Games. You can actually uh, request a beta for them if you Google search them mm -hmm. and check that out. Finally, for part two, uh, kind of spinning around but staying in like the strategy uh, multiplayer arena, taking it out of space and going back into the old west. We have a game I talked about a long time ago on my old show called Secret Ponchos. It, we're getting closer to release, and I finally showed this to you, Joe. So, what did you see from Secret Ponchos? People are people are liking what they've seen. It, it seems like it's a simple game, but I think there's more to this. Well, this is is, is going to be an online only game with uh, some some different uh, modes, uh, a one on one, and some uh, some team based kind of stuff. But it, it's taking place in, in an un, underrepresented genre as the spaghetti western. Yes. I mean, we've seen shades of it, like in Call of War, as, and, and going back, Sunset Riders for the arcade Super Nintendo Genesis. Sure. But, I mean, the Western genre isn't really exploited too much. I mean, really, Red Dead Redemption was the last major Western game, and that wasn't Spaghetti Western. I was saying that that was more like a John Ford Western versus what we're seeing here, more in the Sergio Leone, Clint, Clint Eastwood, you know, Good, Bad, and the Ugly territory. Yeah, even even in, in, in the art style, and it just looks like it's going to be a very. Uh, and you can even do some uh, some local split screen online multiplayer as well. Yes. So, so you can uh, be sit, be sitting and uh, playing online, and you can have a buddy come over and he can join in on the action as well. So you mentioned that this game is only online. Yes. There I, there's two modes that we know of so far. What are those modes? Basically a yeah, one on one, and then uh, one on one death match just. Multiple rounds, just and then an eight-player kind of free -for frenzy game. melee deathmatch. So yeah. uh, it's just again a very simple game, but you know, simple competitive games like this, like like Towerfall Ascension, for instance, are making waves, and they don't have to have too much about them. Just fantastic, fluid mechanics, cool environments, and, and really good sound design. And I think you, that can make a, a pretty pretty playable experience. Plus, we've got different character classes with different weapons, so different ways of approaching each battle. I, I think this is going to make some waves. So this one's coming out for. PC and PS4 only. It was originally only intended as a PS4 exclusive, but I think because of the buzz they were getting, and, and they were getting pressured to put this out on Steam, and I think that's a good thing because we need to see more jumping and jump out like frenzy multiplayer games. And I like think this. That they're, they're going to have a unique game by, by being probably one of the ones I'm aware of, being like a spaghetti western online kind of a game. You know, Absolutely. You know, so they, they, they definitely got something unique there, and it definitely looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so, so again, like whether you're whatever play, platform you're playing on, I mean, so much great stuff to look forward to. That's part two. We've still got more for you, so we're going to come back in a bit with part three and some more crazy, like, multi genre kind of stuff. So stay tuned to Joystick Justice League. We'll be back with more breaking news in a sec.
Alright, welcome back to Racing Justice League to part 3 of Breaking News 004 and we've covered a whole gamut of stuff. This is more like a cornucopia of genres for part 3. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one we're going to talk about here, one that got you immediately excited, I think this is your, your favorite on the list yeah. so far and I'm really... I'm really peaked about it too. It's called Counter Spy. So this one's coming out for uh, PS4, PS3, Vita, and iOS. So if you're not a Sony fan, you won't be left out in the cold. You can play this on your iPhone or your iPad. So Joe, tell us why you are so excited about Counter Spy. Immediately, the art style, the feel, yeah. the look immediately reminds me from these, like, these old sci-fi, these old uh, spy kind of movies like that. Just the whole look and the, the feel. And uh, basically, you're, you're going on these spy missions Trying to prevent a war between the U.S. and, and uh, the Russians. Yeah, so set in the Cold War in like the 50s yeah. and 60s, which which is awesome. I mean, you don't see too much of that, and, and it speaks to what's happening today, really. Yep. And uh, this is a developer based on San Francisco. This is their first game. And, Dynamite. And, and right, right, right out of the gate, I mean, this is, it just I mean, it, it looks so cool. And there's even some some kind of crossplay kind of going on here with the, the mobile and the console. Yeah, it's no mistake that this is coming out on all places. PlayStation platforms because this is meant as one of those PlayStation ecosystem type of games where not only you can you can pro cross play between your platforms so you can you can start your game on PS4, carry over your your Vita or your even your smartphone, but also it's got this Dark Souls vibe of being able to collect intel yeah. and, and leave it for other players Very within cool. that ecosystem uh, using your device. So kind of helping out other players and leaving hints like you would in like Dark Souls when you leave the blood stains or, or the notes. So. Uh, this this game immediately kind of reminds me of like this new 2.5D style that's getting really popular, especially with the with the Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate that came out for Vita and is also coming out for 360 and PS3 awesomely. So, so, so tell me, tell us a bit about the the play mechanics of this, Joe. So you, you got 2D, you have got 3D what's, here. What's, what's really cool is that, that, that uh, it, it's it's very seamlessly uh, blending, uh, going from. Uh, you know, your, your traditional shooting kind of platforming game into the third person uh, shooting mechanics. Yeah. It's, it's blending very seamlessly, and they're, they're doing it in a very seamless way. Yeah, you know, so it's like, you know, for a little bit you might think you're playing like Rolling Thunder yeah. or like Go Go 13, but all of a sudden you take cover and then boom, it's over the shoulder 3D yeah. and you're doing like duck and cover shoot mechanics. So, mm -hmm. or, or even just like trying to like scope out the environment from a new perspective. So, really, like again, it's, it's a platformer. But it's it's immersive. Like it feels like bigger than it actually is. It's combining combining two very uh, very cool elements. And even when you when you go into that third person uh, shooting perspective, once once you, you target your enemy, you're pick, also picking where you're gonna you're gonna shoot them. Yeah. So we're calling you know uh, Fallout Three. Yeah. You know the, the idea that when you lock onto an enemy, you can pick the limb that you're going for, and, and that because this is a time based game. So yep. you can't fuck around in this game. You, you have to make quick decisions, disarm the bomb, or else the doomsday clock is yep. going to run out and the world's going to explode. That's right, so there's a real sense of urgency here. Too. Yeah, but you know... Yeah, and, and it's got that, that cool kind of 60s, you know, Austin Powers-ish mm -hmm. you know, vibe. You know, very colorful, like you said, like a very cool graphic style. I, I'm totally excited about this one. Coming from Dynamite for the PlayStation ecosystem, but also for iOS. And um, moving on to RPGs, one that's got, got probably me the most excited on the list. Uh, this one is called Hyperlight Drifter from Heart Machine, an uh, indie developer coming out sometime this year. This one's coming out for tons of platforms, PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, Xbox One, Wii U, Vita, and even the old Ouya gets, yeah. gets, a, gets a day of light with this one. So Hyperlight Drifter, Joe, a um, lot of influences going on in this game. What, did, what, what struck you immediately about this game when you saw the preview? First, first off, before I go, in, go into, into that part of it, this game was a Kickstarter project. Yes, yes. And their original goal was twenty-seven thousand dollars. Yep. To, to get this going. How much did they make? Six hundred thousand. I mean, they, this game is getting a tremendous amount of support from people online, and rightfully so. I mean, this game. I mean, just it looks. Uh, there's elements of Zelda. There's elements of, uh, of of Bastion, Dark Souls, Diablo. I mean, there's just, there's a ton going on here. It, it has a, that nice old school look. Uh, you know, it just, I mean, this game is just too cool. There, there's a lot of things that, uh, that Heart Machine did right. Like, first of all, when we went to that Kickstarter page, they had everything laid out in detail, yes. but just very well placed. Like they had like moving GIFs yep. on, on the screen. So if you didn't want to click on a video, you could still see something in, in action. They really broke this down. They have a very 
clear focus in what seems like an unclear game. I mean, it doesn't really have a traditional story. I mean, there are people that you can talk, uh, people you can talk to, but really, this is going back to the hardcore, like old school, like dungeon crawler days where it didn't hold your hand and it's just like it's tough as fuck. So really, it does feel like like kind of like Diablo meets Dark Souls, but with with this weird. Like, I, I can't even, I don't even know what's going on. Like, there's just so much originality in terms of, like, aliens, mechs. Yeah, it's, a, there's all kinds of, I think because this, uh, the story is uh, a, a little bit, uh, you know, you can't really quite tell. I think each, each person is going to kind of project their own kind of personality into the character. I think you can really get invested. You know, I think everybody's going to kind of have, like, a unique kind of experience. Like I said, where you're going to kind of, sort of like when you read a book, I like everybody that like, reads a book kind of gets a different, uh, kind of experience from it, and I, I think that's how we're gonna see that in this game. Because it's the atmosphere, Joe. This, this game plays heavily on atmosphere, upon like a very foreboding, brooding soundtrack. You know, very, very, uh, you know, kind of like trippy visuals, uh, and, and a melding of, uh, of imagery. Like again, you have like fantasy-based steampunk here, aliens and UFOs, undead, and just this brutal, not only brutal action, like in terms of like multiple enemies on screen, you know, rushing around the battlefield trying to figure out how to beat it, but also pl puzzle platforming elements too, which which brings the Zelda uh, Link to the Past influence here. The fact that, you know, you've got to hit platforms in the right way while while dodging enemies. There's a lot going on. I can see this being a really big streaming classic. You know, even going into towns and possibly, you know, talking to, to other villagers, which, you know, maybe there would be quests to do. I mean, it remains to be seen with this game. But just like Dark Souls, where they only give you enough to keep you going, the, the, the dialogue's very light, the emphasis, again, is on your experience and the action and, and, and just Ooh. the devastating stuff that's going on. This is not a nice game. The developer, as we're saying, this will, this game will be mean to you. It's going to be hardcore. Yep. So, uh, yeah, somewhere in 2014 for a whole bevy of platforms. That's Hyper Light Drifter. Um, we, we were talking about like uh, kind of political stuff uh, prior when we were when we were talking about counter spy in in relation to the Cold War. Let's go back into that arena for a sec. You you turned me on to this one. This one's called Riot from Team Riot, and I, I can see this game getting into a whole mess of controversy, Joe. Yeah, yeah this is this is going to be P, uh, PC, possibly uh, Mac and uh, portable devices and UEA. You know that this is essentially a Riot simulator. Yes. Done, done in uh, this uh, kind of old LucasArts uh, kind of style. Pixel art. You yeah. know, so not too brutally realistic, keeping in the video game realm, but based on true events. Based on true events. Actual real riots that yeah. happened in Egypt, that happened in Italy. This developer is actually a very poor developer at Italy who actually had to go to Kickstarter because they didn't have the, the resources and the funding to get this done. And also, I mean, come on, like this is a very politically toxic game. I mean, you could get in a lot of trouble for this thing. You, you, I can already see like the conspiracy theorists saying, oh, this is promoting riots. And I mean, I can't argue against that. I mean, really, no. they, they want you to know about human struggle. I think the whole point of this game is, is not only to have fun simulating a riot and, and, and either playing the police or the rioters, but learning a little bit about why these happen. Because these are historically ac accurate. Yeah. You're going to see politicians talking, journalists reporting on this. This isn't just about you know, bloodshed. This is about learning about history. Yeah, you know, the, the, this, this is just, it's a, a very unique premise. The most kind of mirroring what this developer is kind of going through in, in the area that they're in. Is it, this is based on personal experience. Like, yeah. so, and that's part of their funding. Like they, they said that the more funding we get, like you can unlock new riots in this game. You and not only that, create your own. And then the, the community actually decides if this is a good riot based on historical accuracy, fun. Mm. But that, that was part of their, their drive in getting funding is that they can actually go to Egypt and to Spain and to Greece and actually you know see what's going on with these riots firsthand, talk to the rioters, to the police, experience the, the, the devastation and bring that experience to a game. Wow, I, I don't see anything like this. Is this is like games have gotten into political territory, you know, with Bioshock, mm -hmm. but I don't see anything going this hardcore, Joe. I don't, I, don't, I, I can almost see this game getting banned. Yeah, I mean, I hope not. You know, this has a tremendous amount of potential and a real, you know, you know, it's a it's so unique, you know, it's a, you know, and, and it could be a real kind of, a, you know, when it comes to freedom of speech, I think, I think this is kind of an important game, actually. It, it's it's not surprising, Joe. I mean, we're, we're as more information comes out. There's another game called This War Is Mine, which we're going to be featuring later on once there's more gameplay footage coming out of this this anti-war, anti-establishment sentiment that's really coming out. And, and that's the thing, man. Like these people know that the, the 
that the video game platform is a tremendous medium to express the, these unpopular political ideas and to really create change. So I, I'm really interested to see what's going to be happening. I'm going to be following this one very closely. That's coming out somewhere in 2014 for, for PC, iOS, iPhone, Android, and OUYA. So uh, take a look for that one. Switching over, take, uh, on a less serious note now, getting into some, some more strategy, but on a lighter note, one that I think is going to make some big waves in, in the light of the SimCity debacle, this one's called Tropical 5. So the fifth installment in a long-running PC series throughout the, uh, the 2000s from uh, Hamamont Games and Calypso Media, somewhere in 2014 for PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, but only the 360, not the Xbox One. Uh, an interesting thing that the fact PS4 but no, three, but no PS3, and then on the Xbox side, no Xbox One, but the 360. But I mean, that's beside the point. I yeah. Mean, I mean, that, that could you know, change. I mean, that, that's just a, a really cool city builder game. I mean, it, just, it doesn't take itself too seriously. But you're, you're going over from the starting from in the 19th century and going all the way up to the modern day and then into the near and present uh, future. Very ambitious game, Joe. I mean, this very is ambitious. very ambitious. You play El Presidente, and like you say, you're in the Caribbean. You're, it's a city builder that, that dynamically changes from decade to decade, starting in the 19th century, going to the 21st century. But not only you're building your city and, 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 and changing it over the course of decades, like the, the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression 30s, and you will deal with the Depression. Mm -hmm. You will deal with World War I and World War II, your involvement in the Cold War. This game has so many angles, so much historical accuracy, Joe. I mean, look at the costumes. Look at like, look at like the flop dresses they're wearing in the 1920s, like the cars that change from decade to decade. There's a lot of detail in this game, really. And, and that's why I'm wondering how this is gonna run on the 360. This really seems like a next-gen game. Yeah, it definitely, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 it's even gonna have, uh, you know, multiple, you know, for when it comes to online multiplayer, up to, up to four, Four player multiplayer. Another thing that's a first for a series. Talk a bit about more about that. We have the four player multiplayer, but they didn't really get into how that's going to work. I think what's yeah. probably going to happen is you're, you're going to maybe have your own district or your own yep. constituency or something like that. But I think this is really going to pick up where SimCity failed. We didn't see a really good city builder game. The closest uh, on the seventh generation, I think the closest thing we got was Civilization Revolution. Yeah. Um, but really, there's no other competition. I mean, SimCity, they're, they're trying to go offline now, build the offline mode, but really, SimCity is great for what it is, but it doesn't have the, the historical ambitions, the, exactly. the wide-reaching ambitions that Tropical 5 has. Yeah, well, this has the potential, I think, to be, uh, to, to really kind of knock, uh, you know, SimCity, I mean, it's still gonna be popular. I mean, uh, this, this has a real chance and the opportunity to kind of dethrone and become the, Choice when it comes to these uh, civilization building kind I, of games. I think why because it's that it, it's it's not requiring a persistent online. It's it's a contained yes. experience that that takes place over over a couple of centuries. Uh, yes, it does have the multiplayer uh, component to it, but I think it's going back to what we expected from classic city builders, where you can just build this massive empire and not be limited to like this this plot of land like you were with the, the SimCity reboot last January. So I, I think this this could make some noise again with with very little competition that I see. For coming, especially on next-gen consoles, I think this could really, really take off. I think it's going to be definitely your choice when we're looking for that kind of game. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a big long list of uh, stuff to look forward to. Uh, the, the list never ends. We we have more to talk about next. Let's end off the show as we always do with what we're playing this week. So Joe, why don't you start us off? What are you playing right now? What's 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 driving you nuts? Well, number one uh, for me, uh, I've been playing a lot, and uh, I picked this game up a while ago, but but didn't uh, quite get into it, and started to get into it. Uh, and this was a, a game that uh, I learned about from an indie game movie, and that is Fez. Mm -hmm. All right, I feel fish. You know, uh, you know uh, when, you, when you play this game, I mean, I mean immediately, I mean just beautiful pets, books are, you know, this game I, I think really kind of embodies a little bit of what uh, he went through as a developer in developing this game, like almost like he. Wanted to create a place for himself to, to, to relax and get away from kind of what, what, what he was going through personally. Yeah, you know what? You you, you, you mentioned the word relax, Joe. Like there, this game really isn't a hardcore platformer at all. It's it's a game that's meant to be savored, it's, uh, played like in a zen-like state. He, 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 he described it in his own words. It's like a stop and smell the roses kind of game. It's a cubist painting come to life. So yep. just incredible mechanics. Just I, I haven't like I haven't seen this too often and work on a, on a really great level where you can. Spin the world, see new perspectives. Like I mean, it's been done in other games, but he really nailed that that idea of of really expanding this two D world 
into the just the, the planes you can't see. And it really adds to, to, to like when you spin things around, you have different perspective when you can see uh, the past to go. You know, I mean, it, it just it takes the, that side scrolling platform and literally spins it. You know, and, and uh, you know, for a game developed by just <coughs> by, by two guys, you know, just Phil and, uh, and Renaud, the, the programmer, you can definitely see you now that now that I started playing this uh, of, of why it, 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 it took so long to do. I mean, it, this is a very ambitious game for just two guys to take on. Yeah, and mechanically, even though it's it, it looks like a minimalist game, I mean, I, I recently started playing the the beefed up PS4 version that runs at 1080p and 60 frames. You need that 60 frames. Like this, this game is constantly moving. And, and, and like when I was playing it on my crappy PC. The, the stutter of running at 30 frames a second, it was a little jarring, whereas it, it just, it, it lends that zen-like quality where you can play it smoothly mm -hmm. and see the clean pixels, and just that, that sense of discovery that just never ends. And also just thinking outside the box, you know, like jumping between different dimensions and, and restructuring the world to the way, the way it makes sense. Um, fantastic game. Uh, you know, you gotta pick this up on Steam. Uh, PS4, 360, Mac, I mean, it's... PS3. PS3. Yep. Yeah, it is on PS3 now and Vita as well. Yep. Um, in terms of a sequel, really nothing concrete. I th The thing is with the Fantasy version for PS4, it actually was farmed out to a Spanish developer, mm -hmm. so... I don't think Phil Fish completely did that thing. I'm not sure if this means that he's working on Fez 2. I hope he is. I hope oh, this is a way, uh, uh, by now that, that now that Fez is on the PlayStation platforms, I think it's a way for him to test out whether maybe he has some more goodwill after his little burnout. I, I, I think it may be a good, if, if he is working on Fez 2, and uh, if he is, it's being kept a, a really, really good secret. Shh, don't say anything. Don't get into Twitter and, battles. And that's, don't hype it. Just. Surprise us! A very smart move if he's doing so because that will uh, eliminate a lot of the problems that, that he went through originally. Keep it, keep it a secret. And we'll wait until you're closer to release. That way, that way, you know, uh, you're, you're not uh, promise. You know, you don't keep saying. Oh, jinxing like, yourself you with with, yourself. with fake so, hype. And I think that's what he ran into before. He, he told too many people about this and, and ran into too many problems over the development process and got delayed. Again, not a perfect game, but but something that like just shows some sort of genius that when he really contains that creative spirit, he's really gonna. I think if he comes back to the industry, he's really gonna just drop Absolutely. a big bomb on us. Yep. So that you're playing Fez. Uh, what else are you playing right now? <laughs> okay, my, my next game. I mean, uh, this that game we're both is, playing actually. You know, it's uh, you know, it's gonna got a tremendous amount of buzz. Yeah, it's Mixed in a sense. I mean, yeah. overall positive. Yep. And uh, of course, I'm talking about South Park Stick of Truth. Woohoo! All right, finally, the long-awaited yeah. and delayed South Park Stick of Truth. So, Joe, uh, it's it's not a it's not a cheap game. Uh, is know, this worth the price of admission, Joe? I would say if uh, if you're uh, if you are a South Park uh, fan, I would say absolutely. I mean, uh, this is literally you are literally playing through what I would say is probably the second half of season 18 of South Park. That's Especially with this, is I mean, it looks and feels exactly like the show. There are tons. If you're a South Park fan, you will run into a ton of references, and from all seasons. And you want to talk about pushing the boundaries of humor and good taste? This game has it in spades. Forget the show. Forget <laughs> the movies. Forget what they were allowed to get away with on TV. You're gonna see some stuff that's really gonna make your jaw drop in this, and, and just again pushing the boundaries of good taste. We want to mention a few of them. Wow, how about like how about the fact that the last oh. level is is played inside Mr. Slave's asshole <laughs> with like dry cum walls and, and a, a vibrator that makes him go oh Jesus Christ or, or what what was another the infamous anal probing on this basic oh scene. Randy Randy taking the anal probing and liking it yeah. just funny <laughs> Joe I mean you gotta think man this was ambitious a ten hour game yep. that is I finished it that is funny for ten hours. Yep. That is hard to do, man. Yeah, hard to keep you uh, in the, you know, and to then, keep you in the game. And then uh, uh, this is just finally, I mean, just a South Park game that does the show justice and then some. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, we, we both had really high expectations for this, and boy, did they beat and exceed those in my opinion. Yeah, man. I mean, this is. It's, it's, it, I wouldn't say it's as like political and topical as the show is. 
it's more about like take it's just it's it's lampooning the idea of childhood and play. Like you really feel like you're playing swords and sorcerers in your backyard again. Like the way they like especially when you defeat an enemy and you see them playing dead on the ground. And you you nudge them, they go ow, like they're still alive. Like I'm playing dead, moron. You know, like that, that, that's that, all those little things that come together. And then you got the references, you got Al Gore doing the man bear pig, you got oh, Tom yeah. Cruise dropped in the closet. We're spoiling things left, right, and center, but even if I told you these things, there's so much other things just to discover. Looting chests and finding a Faith Plus One CD <laughs> or a copy of The Pooh That Took a Pee. There's just references everywhere. Even if the story a, isn't making you laugh, you're laughing at the reference and the, the recollection. You know what's so cool about, about the South Park humor is that, yes, it is very edgy and borderline offensive sometimes, I mean, but it, but it's it's just it's in my opinion it's just very clever, very well timed, you know. And like even like one of my favorite parts of, of this game actually was right at the beginning, when you you meet Carmen, and, and try to join his little band, and he asks you what your name is, okay? And then you type in whatever, right? And then so would you like us to call you douchebag? <laughs> and you can choose to say yes or no. He's like, oh, are, are you are you sure you would like to be called douchebag? And then you, even if you say no, he's like, okay, douchebag. You know, like it's just it's oh, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's just clever, well timed. It, it never wastes it's a just, moment. Just, oh I mean, and, and just when you think it's 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 done all of its bag of tricks, oh, boom, more. you end up in Canada yeah. and you're in 16 bit <laughs> land, which is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Just the fact that like Canada is not as advanced as the U.S., so it has to be drawn in retro pixel art, and this is a direct homage to like Final Fantasy. Yeah. And just and the fact that you could exchange U.S. for Canadian currency. Yeah, and even the the uh, the, the characters like uh, uh, if you ever watch South Park or if you have, I'll, I'll tell you that the, the the Canadians are depicted as like it's the best way I could describe it. Flat jaw, like, like their head, or it's just like it's like two bowls kind of stuck <laughs> open in on top of each other, and they just kind of move around. I guess like like this is what they're portraying as like, like the the, the, ma like, the map you have Winnipeg like two steps away from yeah, like walking this Ontario. Into, yeah, oh, it's fantastic. Way. You know, there's just so there's something for everybody. Even if you're not a South Park fan, I think if you have a sense of humor, you're gonna find something to like in this. Okay, but yeah, that's fine. Humor, South Park references aside, how does this play as a game, Joe? It plays awesome as a game. This is. Uh, just a, it's a, uh, with a, just a solid turn-based strategy or a role-playing game. Like Mario sure. RPG. But uh, but uh, you, you have uh, you, you can uh, add to yourself. You can level up and give yourself abilities. You can you can literally have a, an ability and a, an attack where you can cup your fart and throw it at the people. You know, it, it's taking those funny elements and, and incorporating them into your attacks. Yeah, and it, it has that Mario RPG time-based element where, like, a flash happens on the screen. If you yeah. hit your attack button, you get that extra attack power, yeah. or you can defend yourself by hitting the button at the right time. You've got spells you can cast. You've got special abilities. You can rotate through all your friends who have their own special abilities in different classes depending on the situation. So maybe you're fighting the Nazi zombies, which never gets old. <laughs> That's hilarious. But you're fighting the Nazi zombies, so you know you need to equip Butters, who's a paladin, who's got holy power or maybe there's an enemy that's more susceptible to gross out so you equip Kenny the princess who goes in and shows him his tits his little raisins um, so much oh funny shit going on but, but gameplay wise it's here, it works like it's it's okay here's the thing let's address a lot of the reasons why this game was shot on like again overall great Metacritic score People said that this was an RPG light, and it wasn't long enough it wasn't as long as your traditional RPG and it wasn't gonna be as hard I would defer. I think it finds a nice middle ground, yes. and and the reason for this, Joe, is that you got to remember, man. South Park fans, not all of them are hardcore RPG players, and will understand how to get through. The I think there's already enough that could go over the average person's head. I, I think the combat and the gameplay is just at that right level to make it accessible, but still, for the hardcore RPG player, there's enough depth in terms of your skill tree. Yeah, they, 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 they got to a real nice balance there. And I think, I think they, 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 like I said, they reached just, uh, I think almost a perfect kind of the middle ground there. Yeah. Satisfied, satisfied both types Simple, of but, but depth. Like you, yeah, you can play it simply, but do. it's not, it's not. And, and there's, there's a lot of upgrades here. There's a lot of different costumes you can get with different abilities, lots of stickers you can add to your weapons that, that change the different powers you have. There's, there's enough to, to get a really, truly customized experience out of this. Yeah, maybe I'd like to see a little bit more variation among the classes you can choose but like you said we're, we're, they're, they're trying to keep this simple enough that an ex, a mainstream audience can latch on to this but complex enough that none of us will feel like we, we've, we've been shortchanged and I don't think we're shortchanged at all in terms of length too when you're going for comedy man you can't just milk it 
and, and yeah. make it a 30 hour game when it's supposed to, when it feels like 10. I think it the feels, length was right. It feels uh, just uh, my, my person, my only regret, but I would like to have seen possibly this would have been maybe uh, a two player. Yeah, on, online I think I, I think it would have been a little, a little too much. I would have liked to have seen a, a, a two player plot. Yeah, it's actually you play as the buddy or something, but um, you know, that's the thing. I don't think that this might be, I don't think this is the last game. I think that this was... They, they've created essentially their own game studio. They finally got it digital. right. Yeah, they, Matt and Trey finally got it right. We suffered through all the crappy South Park games that they admitted they weren't very involved with. Okay, yeah. so that's why they, they suck. This one was direct involvement. You feel yeah. it all over the game. And the other thing I gotta say too before we wrap up South Park is the fact that like the ending, I'm not gonna give it away, but very rarely does a game get that epic ending and leave you satisfied, but maybe wanting... At, at least leaving it open for a sequel. The ending to this, the final battle, is fucking hilarious. It's epic. It just ties it all together beautifully and leaves room for a possible sequel, which I really want to see come out on PS4 and Xbox One. Absolutely. So, South Park is something like I just finished. You've been playing. Definitely recommend it. It's $64.99 in, character, in Canada, $59.99. But like you said, if you're worried that it's not as long as Skyrim or it's not complex enough, you're wrong. It's just it's just perfect. Even when you beat this game, I can guarantee if you're a fan, you'll go back and play it again the next year and the year after that. This is going to be a yearly play for me probably because it's just so well done. Um, to wrap up something, something I've also been playing, uh, Towerfall Ascension, which was out, uh, which was actually the main game for the Wii out for a while, which but it was known as Towerfall, got a PS4 and PC upgrade known as Towerfall Ascension, Joe. Man, no, okay, I wasn't sure about this game. Like, we talked about it on Breaking News, but then I saw the Metacritic score. I'm like, whoa, 91% Metacritic score really for this little one screen pixel art multiplayer game. Joe, like, this game is addictive as hell. You know, we've been uh, streaming this on Twitch a little bit, and I've been watching it, and I've, I've, had, you know, I've had a chance to actually play it, but I mean, it's been just fun to watch. It's but, so simple, kind of like what we were talking about with Secret Ponchos, but it just works. Not only as a single player game to kind of show off how twitchy you can be, like the, 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 the control is beautiful on this game. It's simple, but it works. I, I love that you can just get to where you need to be at the right moment and, and create these beautiful victories. I love the, the, the element of, of where your, your attack is mainly a, a bow and arrow, but you have to, uh, and this adds to, to the strategy, is that uh, you have a little bit, I think like it's about four or five, yep. and then, uh, as you shoot them, they get stuck into the environment, or maybe even if you, if you kill somebody, they, they get kind of pinned up against a uh, wall or something. You have to go back and collect those arrows again. Or else you'll, you'll, you'll be out of ammo. Yeah, you, you'll just be hopping around going, ah. You know? so, and that's the thing, there's there's so many ways to strategize against this. It, it's it, You can shoot in all different directions, but you can also warp to different parts of the screen, like in Pac-Man, by say, jumping through the bottom of the screen, you'll end up to the top. So again, all these, when you're playing, I haven't played multiplayer yet. That's what I'm waiting to do yet. That's why I haven't reviewed it yet. But when you're playing, you can't play this online, unfortunately, but when you're playing local multiplayer, especially for people, there's so much to think about. It's not just about who you're gonna shoot next, but who's above me, who's below me. What am I gonna do when I run out of arrows and the arrows are on the other side of the screen? Am I gonna jump through the ceiling, come out on top, buck the guy on the head? Yeah. Just, just fast, frenetic. I understand why this is online, because it's so quick and yeah. twitchy. There's a, a wide variety of enemy types around too. It's just a lot to keep you on your toes. And it's just, you know, it's quick pace, and it's just that we were really talking about this game. People are like Smash Brothers, people who like, you know, just these uh, head to head uh, kind of games, and it's just, it's, it, it works on just so many different levels, and it's just, it's, it's just too cool. You know, there's always that one really simple party game that just strikes a chord. And I remember back in like the fourth generation's Bomberman. Remember that? Like how big Bomberman was? It, it, well, it was never really big, but people just knew and they like to play it. That's the thing, when I stream this, people are like, whoa, what is this game? It's so yeah. cool. And, and you, you, don't, you would never think people would say that just from taking two seconds. Look at, oh, it's like an old looking it's RPG. It's such a simple uh, idea, but I mean, just, uh, just fleshed out. I mean, just a brilliant execution of, uh, of this game. Yeah, and it all comes down to just flawless controls. And, and like I said, I mean, it's been levied that this can't be done online because the bandwidth can't support the, the latency and stuff. I challenge you guys to do a sequel with online. Absolutely. That thing will explode. So. Uh, Towerfall Ascension, it's on PS4 now and PC, also on OEI, you gotta grab this game if you have, but you, you need people you can play with. So if you're a person who plays only online, 
you'll have some fun with the campaign. You'll probably get sick of it. It's really the local couch co-op that's going to bring that game home for you and keep playing over and over again. So, wow, that's been a pretty uh, jam-packed episode of Breaking News, uh, episode four. Um, stay tuned for more con as, content as always, you know, whether it's uh, Rage Quitters, Joyce's Justice League, Battle Arena, we've got the, the Ever Venerable Roundtable episodes. We recently did one on virtual reality. Are we ready for it yet in light of, like, Facebook's purchase of Oculus Rift? and the, uh, the, the, uh, the reveal of Project Morpheus on Sony's side. Also, Joe, we just did another round table on stereotypes. Stereotypes, that was a very interesting one, and uh, we'll check that one too, guys. We, we, we really uh, really touch a lot of uh, different uh, different things, and we really try to break down these uh, stereotypes that uh, Know, threaten to kind of tear the industry apart. Well, it was like taking like a South Park approach, like you know, like just like with South Park humor, like you were saying, it, it, it may be crude, but it also holds up a mirror to society, and that's why yeah. South Park's important. I think this podcast was a lighthearted, but at the same time, serious attempt to hold up a mirror to the yep. gaming community and really to try to encourage us all to bond together rather than keep fighting each other over over stupid consoles and multinational corporations that really don't give a fuck about us at the end of the, end of the day. But anyway. I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Morin. Uh, make sure you check out Joe's blog at joemorin.blogspot.ca. He recently did one on cinematic games. I have mine at alarmbellnetwork.wordpress.com. And you can catch us live gaming on twitch.tv forward slash 24 bit heroes. Thanks for watching, guys, and you have a great day. Peace. Game on. Game Peace. on, guys. Play when you're playing, like, get away from me! Get away from me! <laughs> like, who's here? Fuck. Alright.